Hello puzzle people, I'm Anthony, and today I want to make a video about puzzle creation rather than puzzle solving. I've made a number of puzzles in the past, some of them are already on this channel and some of them are off hiding in other random places in the internet, but puzzle creation is something I've always wanted to be better at, and I can't think of a better way to get better at puzzle creation than to just start creating puzzles. So I have on the screen here a table of contents for the book Puzzle Craft, How to Make Every Kind of Puzzle. This book is really useful as a reference source, not only because it lists so many different types of puzzles, but also because it gives advice on how to go about creating them, followed by examples of the puzzle type itself. It's one of my personal favorite books on puzzle design, and I realized I've never used it for its intended purpose. I've gone through and solved a lot of the puzzles, but I haven't actually created most of these puzzle types before. Um, so I, I want to I wanna try doing that. In order to try to break myself out of my comfort zone in terms of puzzle creation, I'm not going to just choose a puzzle from this list. I'm going to have a random number generator do it for me. Okay, so first things first, there are four chapters in the book. There's perception puzzles, word puzzles, logic puzzles, and interactive puzzles. So I am going to generate a random number between 1 and 4 to decide which chapter the puzzle that I create today is going to be in. Okay, I'm going to click the button three times, and the third time that I click the generate button, that's going to be the chapter I go with. 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so we're going into chapter 2, which is word puzzles. Now within chapter 2 here we see that there are five sub-chapters. There's wordplay, message puzzles, word grids, crossword puzzles, and variety crosswords. One, two, and three. Okay, so it's coming from the fourth subsection, which is crossword puzzles. Finally, there are five different kinds of crossword puzzles that are discussed in this sub-chapter. One, two, and three. Okay, so I'm doing a blackout crossword. So today I'm going to be making a blackout crossword puzzle. If you want to try the finished puzzle yourself before watching me design it, because obviously the design process will include spoilers, I'm going to leave a link to the puzzle itself down in the description below for you to check out. So first things first, we need to figure out what a blackout crossword puzzle is. As opposed to the normal style of crossword puzzles where some squares are black and some squares are white, and the black squares are used to separate the white squares where the answers are written in, in a blackout crossword puzzle, none of the squares are black. Instead, words are separated by these thick boulder lines uh, that run in between them. This section of the book is written by Mike Selinker, and Mike points out that typically blackout crosswords don't have to have any sort of symmetry. That's opposed to the standard crossword puzzle that tends to have 180 degree symmetry for the black squares in the grid. This section of the book really stood out to me because Mike points out that with this additional freedom that the puzzle designer is given, there's an expectation that they make something good with it. So I'm a little bit nervous because this is my first puzzle design video of this kind, and I feel like this might not have been the easiest place for me to start, but that's why I did the random number generator. So let's read on and see what we can come up with. So for step one, we need to choose a theme for our crossword puzzle. We need to figure out what it is that uh, we want to accomplish. So I'm going to go a little bit easy on myself and assume that my final grid is going to be a bit on the smaller side. This is the website xword.group, and I'm probably not going to make the puzzle on here, um, but it's an interesting website for gaining an understanding of grid construction and just kind of working through possible like shapes and things like that. I just I usually find a lot of inspiration comes from uh, just looking at essentially an em empty grid or a blank sheet of paper and just putting some ideas onto it. So what's a good reason to make a gridless crossword puzzle? So like maybe I want the words to make a shape. I feel like going along diagonals to make some sort of X is a little bit too obvious. Maybe there's going to be certain words in the grid that fit into a specific category, but maybe I can pick definitions such that the category isn't immediately obvious. And it also has to be a category that has some sort of easily recognizable, easily pixelated shape that I can encode into the grid in some way. Am I allowed to show logos on YouTube? 
Actually, YouTube's logo is fairly recognizable. What about, like, emoticons? I could do something interesting with, like, having clues that are emoticons. I could have a bunch of different emotions as entries into the grid. So I guess the question is, what kind of emojis can I make? Maybe make a smiley face. That's kind of cute. <laughs> I think my issue is that I'm uh, trying to come up with two different puzzles at the same time. I'm, I'm trying to come up with a puzzle where the answers or letters in the grid make a shape, but I'm also trying to come up with a puzzle where I primarily or completely use emojis or emoticons as the crossword clues. Does that already exist? See, like, this is the kind of crossword puzzle that I was thinking. What about a collection of entries that hide an emotion in the middle of them? Could I maybe have them put emoticons in the grid as possible letters? I think it might be interesting if I used some uh, common features of emoticons to try to highlight an answer. So, like, one of the emoticons that I'm most familiar with is the love emoticon, the less than three heart. So I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool if I could have them enter less than three into this grid cell, for example, maybe with a um, down clue that has heart in the middle of it or towards the end of it, I'm not quite sure. And so there'd be less than three in here, and then what if I could get them to put an angry emoticon over here on the right? Or maybe even evil. But the point is there's this greater than sign that would be in this grid cell. So I can say look between the less than and the greater than signs to um, find an answer and maybe it's three something. Would I be able to do something similar here uh, going down? Because then I could have this be some sort of instruction. The problem is most emoticons go left to right. So if I have the less than three heart emoticon here in this cell and then over in this cell I have the maybe the devilish one and I say look between those two caret brackets I can have the letters RDS in here and then yeah I can tell people look between there and it'll spell thirds which hopefully will hint that people should look at every third letter so how feasible would it be for me I wonder to make some message within these cells. That's a lot of cells to write a message with, plus one of them overlaps with the devilish emoji. I could also move where those two emoticons are going. So I'm trying to come up with phrases that could go into this set of black squares here. And I don't know, this could be over constrained, but I'm hoping that the freedom of having this be a blackout crossword is going to allow me to put specific letters into these very specific spaces. Fingers crossed. So I'm basically trying to figure out where I'm going to fit that extraction within a message. I'm trying to pick some sort of message that's going to be uh, positive, maybe uplifting, something uh, having to do with the emotion theme. Maybe I can use the heart. Maybe like this hearts for letter U. Like get some more of the text kind of lingo into this here. And then I need a six letter word after that. This hearts for you. Enjoy. Hooray. Yippee. What if I say have hearts from me to you? Does that fit? Have hearts from me to, no, it's so close, it's one letter off. Unless I do the number two. How do I put the number two in there? I'm gonna give it a go. Okay, so this is a different program called QXW, and this is what I've used in the past to make crossword puzzles, so I'm going to um, try to use this again here to fill this grid. Have, so this is where the heart's gonna go in this cell. From me? Number two, Y, O, U. Have hearts from me to you. So now we have to work on filling in the grid. 
Okay, so obviously the places that I'm going to want to start are places that look particularly constrained. Like this VR, DVR, digital video recorder. Okay, let's try that. Of course, that now gives us this DH problem. Um, I might have over constrained myself on this grid. We'll see. <laughs> I could, you know, just do this if I wanted to just completely start blocking stuff off. We'll see. Can I find anything with DH in it? ADHD, that's a fairly common acronym. Of course, the first two entries I'm putting in are both acronyms, which actually kind of fits the text um, idea of the puzzle. All right, I'm gonna go with ADHD. What can I do with this heart? Maybe a blank heart, um, it just says at heart. If I do at heart here, then I have TV. How do I reference at heart though? Like how would I clue that? I guess that's a problem for when I'm writing the clues. I think I can fit the word hadron in here, like the large hadron collider, which is often abbreviated LHC, um, which would kind of go with this, like we have an abbreviation, like an acronym theme going on here <laughs> as well. TVA is something. Tennessee Valley Authority. So I could put Hadron in here with the bar there. TVA is the Tennessee Valley Authority. I could spell Weevil. I think Weevil's fine as long as both the W and the E are double checked. So that puts a line there. Unfortunately, this letter here will not be double checked which is sad. I just have to make sure that clue six down is unambiguous, easy to solve. I'm gonna try to minimize those unchecked letters as much as I can. IEDs, that's a pretty common acronym. That puts an S here. I could have WAN up here, W-A-N. Then I can have NSF for National Science Foundation here. I don't really know if I like the large number of acronyms that I have in here or not. It's It feels fitting to a theme, but it might also just be cheating. <laughs> At the very least, they're all fairly common acronyms. Hmm. I kind of thought that this add word would have more entries. At least if I'm trying to stick to common ones, the, the best is ad hoc. Well, it, I think there's some options for what could go here that starts with the two. Like I'm thinking maybe a two-way street. And now I have an MW. I also have this MC, MCU for Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's a good acronym, very popular right now. BMW would work, but then I have an unchecked letter here, maybe BMWs. I could do something interesting here. So like if I cut it off like that, I could do something interesting here like H2O or P2P. Like there's a bunch of acronyms that have a two in the middle of it. Bob? Ah, Bob is an acronym for Bombs Over Baghdad, which is a song. Okay, so maybe we'll try Bob. And we'll try buys. Sus. I could just block it off here and give a reference to Among Us, because I've been playing Among Us recently. I mean, when sus falls in your lap, you gotta use sus. So MOH is an acronym for Medal of Honor, and I'm familiar with that phrase, but I don't know that I've seen the acronym itself very frequently. I think I'm gonna do it. I think it's worth it to have the H2O. Okay, we're getting close. We're almost at the end. Actually, I might be at the point where I can utilize QXW's help feature. I could switch H2O to P2P. I'm just being stubborn because I really like that H2O is in there. There's also Y2K. I kind of like Y2K. Let me let me delete a couple more things and try this with Y2K as the fill here. Tom and Toy. Okay. Muck. Okay, now what can go here? Fork? Oh, fork and flea. Okay, I think we have our fill for the grid now. Okay, so I had to take a bit of a break. It was taking longer than I expected to to uh, design this puzzle. Um, so this is actually a couple days after I set the initial grid. Um, you'll notice that a couple of things have actually changed because I realized 
um, when looking over the grid a little bit later, that I inadvertently changed this letter M, which is part of the final extraction message, to something else. So I've changed from H2O to P2P now. We now have mop and moo. Uh, loop along the bottom, dual and dark along the sides here. So I think the grid now works for final extraction, and I'm ready to move on to setting the clues. So QXW has a convenient export blank grid and export filled grid um, sections. It also has export puzzle. Okay, so it looks like I can basically put my clues directly into this text editor. It might be better to just export the grid and do the clues in PowerPoint or something as a separate entity. But for this puzzle, at least, since it's fairly small, I'm going to try to do the clues in the native HTML just to get a feel for what that's like and see if that's something I want to do in the future. So I need a clue for ADHD. I think for all of the answers that are an abbreviation, I'm going to put a star after them to hint that they're part of the thematic idea of the puzzle. Maybe I should try to put make all the clues like text, like somebody who's texting. Like, try to use abbreviations and stuff. Is that going overboard? Condition of one who can't focus with the number one. Okay, next up we have to write a clue for wan. So there's two versions of wan. Wan could be mean like pale, like a person who's, who's pale-faced. But wan is also an acronym for wide area network. Okay, for WAN, I went with the definition of pale, and the clue is like people who are pale, but I did PPL for people. TVA is going to be a harder one because that's pretty much the only one in the grid that I wasn't familiar with beforehand. But I think we can do some abbreviations pretty easily with something like US Org. I went with US Org with CEO Jeff Lyash. Okay, I think I got a clue for Bob. I'm going to go with... Dylan, Dylan with songs like I Want You. For Mop, I went with the clue Wet Tool to Clean Up, and I used the carrot for up. Okay, MCU. I went with Iron Man or F.E. Man, and Hawkeye are part of it. These are starting to get faster as I get more comfortable with abbreviating things horribly. Eon. What am I going to do for Eon? I'm not sure how I feel about this one for Eon. Uh, the clue should read, it's a duration of time that is very long, except I replaced the S from it's, the A, and the D from duration with a sad face. <laughs> so it turns out that Two Way is actually a song um, by Little Romeo, and it's the first single from the album Game Time. Okay, the clue for loop, I said, a hyper one requires miles of track, replacing the S from requires and mile from miles with smile. Right, so I need to give a clue for at heart here. That might be a little tough to do. I think it's easiest to clue phrases like this with easily searchable like titles or or things that people could find so for example Frank Sinatra sang the song young at heart and so this clue Frank Sinatra song young blank should clue the phrase at heart and I feel like it's pretty important that this clue be easy to solve because this is one of the ones that has the heart emoji in the puzzle so for the answer disc I really like this clue that I just came up with that is they can be hard or floppy. <laughs> okay, Weevil. Weevil's gonna be a tricky one, isn't it? So for the clue Weevil, I gave the clue Beetle of the Super Fam. And this is the super family of the Weevil. So if, if they search that, Weevil should come up pretty easily. But I liked abbreviating family to fam. For the word Moo, I gave the clue Cow Speak. I found that SPK is an abbreviation for speak. All right, so currently this is how the crossword puzzle looks. So I definitely want to give some flavor text. It might be a little more on the nose than I want, but I think I'm just going to call it SMS blackout. Okay, so now for the flavor text, and I've actually been thinking about the flavor text a little bit. So for flavor text, I'm thinking something pretty quick that establishes abbreviations and also emoticons. Um, but I also want something that sets up for the final answer. The flavor text is, my spouse sent me this puzzle in a text message, but I don't know what they are trying to say. 
which kind of sets up for the final message of sending hearts from me to you. Um, the italic text I have here as a bit of a hint that there are going to be three strange entries in the grid. It says two entries in this grid will make you smile. One other entry is weird too. <laughs> Okay, I think that wraps up this video. I hope that you've enjoyed watching me create this blackout crossword puzzle. I'm going to run it through a round or two of playtesting before posting this video. So if the final puzzle that I link down in the description doesn't look exactly like this, it's probably because I've made a couple of tweaks since I finished recording this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you want to see me keep creating puzzles. I had a lot of fun with this, so I think I'm going to be creating more in the future. Have a great day, and as always, Happy escaping.